I know we're on time crunch. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out. My name is Karen Smith, and I'm just going to assume that you've had a chance to take a peek in the um, program and look at my bio, and I'm not going to go over all those details. Basically, I'm a public relations professional, and I worked in that capacity for Central Buck School District for almost nine years. I thought I would start this evening out with a little story. The story is called, What We Can Learn About School Communications from Fruit Loops and Macaroni Noodles. During my work at the school district, I visited one of our first grade classrooms during their 100th day of school celebration. The students were making the number 100 out of Fruit Loops and Macaroni Noodles. How cute, you may think. But that was far from the whole picture. The students had been studying the number 100 all year in counting exercises and in how 5 and 10 relate to 100. They had made graphs. They'd read books about it. They had spelling words on the topic. And they even uh, studied um, a school from 100 years ago. They wrote stories about what they had done for the first 100 days of school. And then they happened to use Fruit Loops and macaroni noodles to make a craft project. You would be mistaken if you thought that was all that had happened in that classroom. The Fruit Loops were just the icing on the cake. What we were really seeing was active learning, reading in the content area, cross-curricular learning, and differentiated instruction. These are improved methods of teaching that really enhance learning. I tell that story because it demonstrates how modern education is very complex. So if you have experience in business or management or accounting, that does sound great for a prospective board member. But if you don't have experience in education, you're going to walk in the classroom and see Fruit Loops. And that could end up with you making, perhaps, a mistaken decision about our educational process. I think my experience in education will help me make informed decisions as soon as I take my seat on the board. Right now, we're facing serious budgetary challenges that could harm our academic program. So I believe we need to work on three angles to meet our budgetary challenges. Untangle our funding, find new revenue sources, and reduce spending. Perhaps you've heard school advocates in the past complain about unfunded mandates, regulations, but they never quite explain what they mean. So I compiled a list of about 3% of the regulations from the school code for the past 10 years. The right to know law, school bus idling, tax study commissions, forced budget timelines, required standard budget forms, transportation for private and charter school students, BMI recording, wellness policies, required CPR training to the general public as well as employees, green construction certifications. I'll keep going, but I think you get my point. Regulations like these do exist, and new ones are being added every year, and they do increase school costs. So how about we let the school districts have more authority on the local level over some of these regulations? Why do we have to use the prevailing wage for school construction when using market value labor costs 10% less? Jerry McMullen already mentioned that earlier. 10% on $80 million, which is the cost of CB South, it was $80 million, $84 million. That's real money. Why do we have bidding requirements that came from um, thresholds that were set 50 years ago? Why don't school boards have the authority to work with their communities and determine if the community would like to levy different types of taxes that would better balance the, the burden of the property tax. In the past, other communities have used an amusement tax or a hotel occupancy tax. Some of these changes would help schools have more independence with the revenue they already have. But we also need new revenue. When I worked at the district, I realized there was a market value for the audience that the district speaks to. We can improve our communications through a strategic use of technology and business sponsors. And these sponsors could be a new source of revenue for the district. And of course, we always need to continually look at our program to reduce costs. Sometimes reducing costs means changes. And I'm experienced at dealing with the difficulties that those changes can bring. It's not easy to bring about change in a school district. In closing, I'd just like to say that my work at the district exposed me to the perspectives of the entire school community. So I think my experience in education will allow me to be an independent thinker on the board and an independent voice. I look forward to using my skills and my background to represent you on the school board, and I may have a few seconds for a question if anyone is so inclined. Yes.
well, I'm no longer employed there. I'm no longer employed by the district at this point. I left my job last year. Um, I do, as you mentioned, have a, a pension from the district. Um, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to have a problem with that. I think I'm using my experience to um, help bring back to our community what my children have, have gotten over the years. Um, I could see where other folks may feel differently. Um, and currently the law is set up so that it's not illegal for someone to be a board member and have a spouse who works for the district. Anyone else? 